Today I'd like to talk about the concept of masking. So what is a mask? Essentially, you can think of a mask as a selection. Another way that I like to think of masks is that it's a stencil. You take this stencil, for example, of this boat, uh, this sailboat, you can see that there is a black part of the mask and then there's this part of the stencil where, let's say, if we were to send some spray paint through this stencil, that it would paint that. The, the effect, essentially, would be that the spray paint would go through the stencil and we'd see the, the sailboat. Whereas everywhere where there's the mask, we wouldn't see any sort of effect happening. So whenever there's a mask applied to a layer, uh, there's a part that's off, which is masking that section of the, that particular layer off, and a part that's on. And the part that's off is always going to be black, and the part that's on is going to be white. There are areas of gray in between this that we'll look at, but for the most part, that's generally the concept of masking. So let's take a look at this in Photoshop. Go ahead and open up a couple of images here in Photoshop. So you can see here with these uh, two DNGs here, they open up in Adobe Camera Raw. Those settings both look pretty good, so I'm gonna go with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and open both of these items up in Photoshop. So the idea here being that we need to get a selection of this moon off of this black space here and get the moon to look believable in this new background image. So, you know, a lot of folks will default to, say, Magic Wand, and you have to play with the tolerance quite a bit to get a good selection, and it might start to eat into the edge of the moon a little too much, things like that. We can find another way to get a selection of this, utilizing the channels over here. Basically, photographs are made up of red, green, and blue light, and whatever that photo has the most of, that particular channel will, in that area, will be the lightest. In this case, it's a pretty warm shot of this moon, and the red channel, compared to the green and the blue, the red is lighter in tone. Therefore, it has more information of the red channel than the other two channels. So with this, we don't want to really do any work on the channel itself, because that will be destructive to our file. We need to make a copy of it, so we can drag it straight down to this dog-eared page icon here, create a new channel. And this is basically, we're working under the hood now in Photoshop and uh, sort of this invisible alpha channel zone. What we need to do is we need to increase the contrast uh, of the moon here. We need to make it more white. We can do that simply under image adjustments levels. And you'll see if I push the black slider, we start to lose the moon over here. So I got to be careful not to push the black slider in this particular scenario. What we want is the, the black area of this, this channel is pretty black as it is. It's pretty, you know, pretty much there. What we need is to make this moon more white. So I'm going to push against the white slider. But I have to be careful and I have to look against these edges here. Drag it back and see space, as I push against it, it starts to bring the edge of the moon out a ways, a little too far there. So I'm going to hit the preview button and just check. That's looking like a pretty good selection edge there. We'll be finessing it in another step. And this information we can get rid of in another step as well. That's looking pretty good. I've got some gray tones I'll have to get rid of along the space edge here, and some gray tones on the inside of the moon I can get rid of. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to get my regular paintbrush here, and I'm going to change its mode from normal to overlay. And what this does is it allows me to paint, if I'm painting with pure black, I can hit D on the keyboard, and X, and I've got black, pure black in my foreground, I can paint these little gray bits out without it affecting the white area of the moon when I'm in the overlay mode. I'm going to go and paint these little gray bits out. It's looking pretty good. And I'm going to toggle to white and do the same thing, and I'm going to paint on the inside and paint these gray bits out on the inside of the moon. It's looking pretty good. Just like so. And there we have. We have a pretty good starting mask of the moon. I'm going to click back on the RGB composite. And I'm going to command click the channel to activate it as a selection. And we're going to go into the select and mask dialog. And the reason we want to go here is we want to attack this fringe that we can see here along the edge of the moon. And I can do this, I can toggle my radius slider up, and it starts to tell Photoshop to look along the edge of the selection for more transparency, which is nice because when we blend this into the new sky, we'll want a little bit of a softer edge on the moon. And you can see that 
just right there, that helps quite a bit. I want to put maybe a little bit of a feather on my selection, as I usually like to do, and I want to make sure down here in Output Settings that I choose Layer Mask, and I click OK. And you can see back on the Layers palette that it's now taken that mask, remember our sailboat that we had there, and it's basically created a moon where the on part is, the white part of the mask, and turned off the section where the space is. That's what we want. We've got this mask now that it's attributed to that moon. We're going to use our Move tool, V on the keyboard, and drag that moon right over, and we're going to go ahead and edit Free Transform to scale that moon down to a more believable size. Something more like that, sure. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch the blend mode here to screen to get rid of some of the black information so it blends in nicely and drop the opacity down so it's a little bit more of a believable looking opacity on the moon, it picks up some of the color of the sky, which is nice. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to get a believable reflection of the moon down here in the water. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command J and double up that file, click this bottom one, that's going to be our reflection. We need to flip it on axis, so we're going to go to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical, and I'm going to use my Move tool holding Shift and I'm going to drag that moon down here into the water where I feel like it would probably be. Somewhere down in there. Sure, somewhere down in here. Now, I've made sure to make that particular layer the one that's directly above our new background because I'm going to blend these together. To do so, I'm going to come down here to the FX tab and I'm going to choose the blending options. And what we're looking to do is to get some of this underlying layer to begin to appear up into this moon. So I'm going to zoom in on it so we can see it. And I'm going to target this underlying layer and as I drag the black slider over some of the black information, the darker information begins to appear in the ocean. And I hold Option and it splits the slider and it brings to bring in, goes to bring in some more of this mid-tone information, giving me a pleasing blend. When I'm happy with that, I'll click OK. And I come back to my layer mask and I'm going to use a soft edge paintbrush and I'm going to switch it to normal mode and make sure that it's in black. And I'm going to paint out some of the hard edge of the moon here because to me that doesn't really help for the believability to have that hard edge there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll drop the opacity a little bit more, giving us this final composite where we're basically taking a selection and turning it into a mask. Uh, we've created that mask from one of the image's own channels. And uh, which is a handy way to get a very accurate selection, turn it into a layer mask, which basically blacks out the, uh, the area of space in the photo and allows us to drop this believably into a new composite altogether. And doubling that file up and blending it with some extra blending options, we can then create a believable reflection.